I don't know if you can hear me, but I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, great. I know that Susan uh, is going to be on in a little bit. She went to... Uh, um, her. She she was here for class, but she said she went. Uh, she left her stuff over there at work, so she was going over there. Sounds good. I'm just maybe waiting for one or two more people, and then we'll get started. Okay. Hopefully, those guys remember that we have class today. Yeah, I, I can text them if you want. Sure. How's school going so far? So far, so good. Just a lot of reading. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure you guys are spending plenty of time on Zoom. Mhm. Mm or WebEx or whatever. So. Hello, hello. Welcome back. Hello. Does Gabriel know that we have class today? Oh, I believe. He went to the uh, well. Let me email. Uh, not email. Text him, uh, because I went to the uh, to the uh, virtual lesson space on Blackboard, and I forgot uh, you sent us this um, um, what's it called? Oh, link. Oh, 
from like a separate um, meeting. Okay, well, if that's if that's the easiest, I'm not sure. Like, I'm I'm not sure what the easiest way is. I just know that I, I am able to schedule meetings, uh, through, I guess the app. Um, but if that's different than the virtual room, then then I guess that's my fault. So, didn't mean didn't mean to cause confusion. All right, so aren't, we're all, aren't they aren't, aren't the uh, the the, uh, the same link? That's what I thought. I don't know. I'm not sure. Like, I honestly, I normally use Zoom. So the only time I use WebEx is is with y'all, um, and so I'm not sure if I am doing it right. But um, if that's if that if that was the case, then that's my fault. So. Um, oh no, it's fine. I, I I just texted him. He said, um, "Okay, cool, cool. He'll be here in a bit." Okay, sounds good. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Okay, so does everyone have a pair of over ear headphones that they could use for class today? Or earbuds of some kind. It's gonna be. It's gonna yes, be. Sir. It's gonna be helpful if you can listen to some of these audio examples with a decent pair of headphones. Um, that way you can kind of hear some of the things that I'm gonna be showing you in this class. Because remember, this is a sound editing and production class, and so part of what I'm gonna try to teach you this semester is how to listen to audio critically, and that's gonna help us for this next assignment, which is. Um, about doing a field recording. Uh, does anyone by chance know what a field recording is? A place where we can uh, record. <laughs> okay, that's one um, guess. Does the, anyone, else, uh, anyone down, else have a guess? Yeah. Well, the environment, something like that, I don't know. Um, is it when we record nature sound? Sure, that's another that example. Like our next project? Yeah, so check it out. Can y'all can y'all make a little note of this in your little notebook or wherever you take notes? This is gonna help you with the assignment, okay? So a field recording is basically a professional recording of um audio, I guess within nature or not, because a field recording can just be um me with a microphone out in the woods, like just kind of listening to the birds, listening to the wind in a professional setting to where like that, like that Zoom recorder that we have, that's actually ideal for field recordings because when you're going on, if you're, if you're going to try to record audio of some kind, you don't want to be lugging an entire recording studio with you if you're going to go try to do something, let's say like in nature or whatever. And so those, those uh, portable handheld devices are ideal for that because you can just put it in your backpack maybe lay it down on some rocks or something, capture some audio. And so um, have y'all ever have y'all ever listened to a CD of some kind that um, is maybe just like sounds of nature? Here, I'll see if I can show you an example. Um, I'll look it up on, I can look it up on YouTube. It's okay. Yeah, sometimes my dad likes to listen to that while he goes to sleep. Yeah, like here, I'll, I'll play y'all something that I find very pleasing. So um, you can listen to sounds of the ocean. Let's listen to that together for a second. So if y'all have your headphones, I want you to just listen to this with me, okay? And uh, I want you to kind of take note of what you hear. Like you could talk about, you know, is the water just, you know, kind of around or is it hitting rocks? Do you hear birds, you know, seagulls? Let's see if we can critically listen for maybe a couple seconds together and see what we can discover. All right, hold on. Share screen. Can y'all see my screen? Yes, yeah, I can see yes. it. Great. Yes. So yes, let's just can. let's just listen I can for, see it. let's listen for maybe 30 seconds, okay? I want you to tell me what you hear. There's probably a commercial. I'm sorry. Hold on.
Okay, so that was about like 50 seconds or something, almost a minute. So what, I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to have you give me some crazy answer, but, you know, I'm just asking you, like, at face value, what do you hear? Anybody? Well, uh, the sound quality was pretty, 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 it felt kind of, like, pretty real. I'm not going to lie. Um, total, total, like, peace, you know, peaceful environment and, 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 and. If I if I if I if I uh, didn't see the video at all, I I would I would have probably probably assumed that it was like you know like the waves rolling you know over there in like at the beach and everything. Let somebody piggyback off of that. What else? What else did you hear? And then I'll jump in. I hear, I hear the wind. Um, I can hear the waves like hitting, not hitting, but like it's. You can tell, like, I feel like you can imagine the waves hitting the sand. Sure. And um, sometimes I can hear, like, the white noise. Yeah, that I, I was going to get to that. That's an excellent point. Can you all write that down, that word down? It's like, like um, it's almost like this drone, almost like this kind of background hum that's, like, just kind of constantly just there. Yeah. Um, whether that's whether that's like let's see if you can listen to it real quick it's almost like this like high pitched like um kind of background it's almost like a tss kind of sound do y'all hear that yes yes okay so check this out make a little note of this when we're when we're trying to like EQ and compress and trying to mix and master recording natural recordings like this, you have to be aware of the frequencies that like pop out, um, and that and that that kind of background white noise that Susan was talking about, um, that's a very present um, uh, frequency in this particular recording. It's like this like. Tss from like the from the water swishing together or whatever so that might be a frequency that we have to tame and like kind of mess with an eq and stuff like that so that's kind of some of the stuff that we're going to be talking about for this next project which if you haven't turned in the first project there's still time so just make sure that you guys are on top of that okay um let's listen to maybe one more real quick um i always found like campfire sounds kind of pleasing um let's listen to this real quick let's see what we hear Kind of like crackling, crackling wood fire. Okay, so that was about 30 seconds. Uh, let's get somebody else. What did you hear? Maybe Gabriel or Desiree? Uh, so besides like, um, besides like hearing the fire uh, crackle with the wood, like um, as it's just sizzling, I can also hear like the waves like in the background, how it's like, it's not like um, as loud or it's like crashing down. It's just like, it's just like straight up, like just flat, like calming. Like no interruptions. But so that's that's maybe some like background noise a little bit. Yeah. Um, what would you say is like the primary kind of noise that's happening in this recording? The primary one for sure would be the um fire, like as it's just slowly burning the wood like into like ashes, like. Yeah. So I have a question for for everybody in the class. Where do you think the microphone was placed by? Do you think it was placed by the water or do you think it was placed maybe somewhere else? The picture kind of gives I, it away, but I mean. Yeah. Um, mostly, I think it's mostly like uh, towards the fire, but a little bit close to the lake so you can hear the, the water. 
Yeah, and I mean, would you have been able to guess that without looking at the picture? That's 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 kind of the the gist, I guess. And um, the uh, the another important thing is, you know, if you're gonna get a recording like this, it is kind of important, like where you place the zoom device, so that way, um, whatever object is immediately in front of it, like that's kind of the immediate thing that you're gonna capture. Um, if you wanted to have more of a balanced uh, sound, if you will, I maybe would have placed the microphone like kind of in between the fire and the lake so that way you could hear both of them balanced and even. Does that sort of make sense? Uh, yeah, it does. Okay, so that leads us into what we're going to talk about today. So, okay, chapter two um, was kind of difficult to read because it's a lot of... Uh, recording jargon um do you guys know what the word jargon means it's okay to say no jargon jargon is spelled j a r g hold on jargon uh g o n yeah so jargon, J-A-R-G-O-N. What jargon means is jargon means vocabulary specific to a specific job or whatever. So if I start throwing out words like forte and pianissimo and legato, those are words associated with music as a profession. If, if any other Joe Schmo were to hear me say those words, they'd be like, what does pianissimo mean? I don't understand. That word is not a normal word that people just use every day. So what 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 all these words are for this week, these are all basically jargon words of the recording industry and, and sound engineering and stuff. Um, am I losing you? Maybe? Yes? No? Okay. So all these no. words, all these words, yeah. Like if y'all can just give me some feedback, just a yes or a no, it's gonna help me. Cause like I don't, I don't want to go on unless um, we have somewhat of an understanding of what we're trying to learn. Okay, so I'm gonna briefly talk about these things, but I want us to talk mainly about the next project that's coming up. So, okay, does anybody know? Or actually, as we do this, can you open up your eBooks to chapter two? We're gonna kind of look at this together because a lot of this is like a mouthful to like learn about. And so here's what I recommend. If you um, if there's any way to highlight in your ebook, that would be cool. Or if you can just make a note, maybe with pencil of like some of the things that we talk about. A lot of a lot of what we're gonna talk about today is like the science of recording and science of audio, which is important, but I don't want you to get overwhelmed, okay? A lot of this is just for, for reference, just so you can learn about it a little bit. It's not really it it is, but it isn't necessary for the stuff that we're doing in this class, um, per se. Okay, ready to take some notes? Awesome. So let's look up chapter two, sound and hearing. We can kind of scroll down. Y'all can see my screen, by the way, right? Yes. 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 Okay, so I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling down to where it says waveform characteristics. You know, you can either look on with me, that's okay, or you can, um, or you can look at it on your own screen too. Who can tell me? What a waveform is, you can just read it out loud. A waveform is a graphic representation of a sound pressure level or, or voltage level as it moves through a medium over time. Okay, pause. That's kind of a mouthful, right? Yes. Okay, so here's a shortened version of what a waveform is. A waveform is basically the picture of the audio. So if I open up Audacity or Ableton right now, the audio turns into ones and zeros that turn into waveforms. So this is what a waveform is. It's just basically the picture of the audio. Can y'all make a little note of that maybe? Great. All yeah, right. I uh, got it down. Excellent. What is amplitude let's gonna let's see if we can find amplitude on here all right uh who can read us the first sentence for amplitude maybe somebody else 
I got it. <clears throat> okay, amplitude. The distance above or below the center line of a waveform, such as a pure sine wave, represents the amplitude level of that signal. Great. Okay, so as you can see, the amplitude is here. It's like the height uh, or height or shortness of the waveform. So if I look back at this, oops, the amplitude basically means when the picture gets bigger, the sound is louder. And when the picture is smaller, or like the waveform is smaller, like the volume is less. That's what that means. So in this particular moment, is this a loud moment or a soft moment? A loud moment? Yeah, because it's got those spikes right there. See where it just jumps up like that? So the amplitude would be high during those parts, and then it jumps back down right afterwards. Just something to be aware of. Great. Let's look at the next one. We're just going to kind of breeze through these vocab words real quick because I want us to get to the project. All right. Frequency. Let's look up that one. Who can read the first sentence of frequency? Maybe somebody else. The rate at which. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, the rate at which an acoustic generator, electrical signal, or vibrating mass repeats within a cycle of positive and negative amplitude is known as the frequency of that signal. Oh my gosh, that's a mouthful. <laughs> okay. So think of frequency like this, okay? When you have really low instruments, like a tuba or a timpani or a bass drum, the frequency waves are very slow because it's like like a really low bassy sound kind of kind of going, okay? Um, for instruments that are higher pitched, like a flute or a piccolo or even a clarinet or something, it's a lot higher pitched than maybe a bass drum. Uh, the frequency waves are going to be faster, possibly larger or shorter. Um, where that where that comes into play is um, for tuning purposes. Like if you if you need to tune a note to a specific frequency, it helps to know um, a little bit about the science of audio and about sounds. So if you're trying to tune your piano to A440. A440 is the frequency, if that makes sense. So if you're trying to tune a piano to A440, but you're tuning it at A39, or sorry, at 439, you're one cent below where it needs to be, so it'll be out of tune. So frequency is important just for basically tuning and also for um, understanding maybe what kind of mic to use as well. Because if something picks up a lot of high frequency, or like if an instrument produces a lot of high frequencies, and I choose a mic that that really highlights the low frequencies, that might not be the right mic. So it's important to know that a little bit, um, the science-wise of it. All right, what is velocity? The velocity of a sound wave as it travels through air at 68 degrees Fahrenheit is approximately 1,130 1, feet per second or 344 meters per second. Oh my this gosh, speed that's a lot is temperature. Of <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what, what velocity can be boiled down to is the intensity of a note. So you can make a little note of that. So if I'm playing the drums and it's like, bam, like on my bass drum, it's got a really high and fast velocity. If I'm uh, playing my tuba 
and I just play a, no a low note that's like, oh, it's really not that intense. It's more of like a slow and long kind of uh, movement. So you can think about it like that. So it kind of says that in the first sentence where the velocity of sound wave as it travels through the air. So it's like if it's quick and fast, then it's going to have a lot of velocity. If it's like a slow note, then it's not going to have a lot of velocity. All right. So here, here's the big thing as we're going through this. I know it's kind of a lot, and I know it can seem a little overwhelming, but here's what I want you to, to walk away with for today, okay? Listen very carefully. Who can tell me what a reference book is, like just in general, in like in academia? Um, a reference book is oh, basically what it is. Like it's a reference, so like you don't have to memorize everything, um, you know, about your field. But if you have like a reference book, you be like, oh yeah, I remember this. And I don't like like if you don't remember every single thing about this one specific thing, you can reference the reference book, and I'll tell you. Yeah, exactly. So I want you to think of it like this, okay? When you're reading a reference book. It's not designed to be read from beginning to end, like once upon a time, and then you, you know, like a story, and then you get to the end. A reference book is more like, hey, um, I've got this recording project that's coming up. It has instruments that I'm not used to recording, or if I have questions about what I, what I need to be doing, um, I'm going to reread these chapters in the reference book so I can get a better understanding. So we're, what we're learning today is really just breezing over this and me just introducing you to this as a reference material. So if you ever wanted to dive deeper, um, you can. Okay, so let's finish this up. What is, what is phase? This is actually kind of important. What is phase? Let's look at this. Let's look at this paragraph right here. Who can read from here? Whenever two or more waveforms arrive at a single acoustic acoustic location or are electrically conducted through a cable at a phase, their relative signal levels will be added together to create a combined amplitude level at that one point in time. Okay, excellent. Thank you. All right, please make a note of this. Um, what phase basically boils down to at the end of the day is... Um, whenever we're doing stereo recordings, like when two microphones are present on one, like recording one instrument, um, those microphones need to actually be positioned a certain way that when the, when the uh, instrument is recorded, both microphones are picking up the audio at the exact same time. If one of the microphones is closer to the instrument than the other, both microphones won't pick up the audio at the exact same time. Like it'll be delayed by a little bit, which is what causes, uh, which is what causes phase. So on the zoom recorder, if you look at it, those microphones that are on there, those are like permanently positioned in a certain way. Um, that's to help you. So that way you don't have to worry about phase. Like those microphones are already, uh, they're, they're placed in the correct position to where they, they will always be in phase and you don't have to worry about that. But if you have two different microphone stands and you're trying to put the microphones in the correct position, um, it's important that you have them positioned in the correct way. That way they're in phase and you won't have um, problems with your audio. And again, I know that's kind of a mouthful, but this is just some reference stuff that you can look back to. Okay, I think how many more do we have left? Harmonics, envelope. Let's look up harmonics and envelope real quick. Who can tell me what harmonic content is? Um, let's see if we can maybe start from... I guess just I guess just read a couple sentences. Let's see what we can read, find out. Uh, 
um, up to this point of our, wait, right? I'm on the right uh, page. Okay, yeah. yeah. Let's start here. Um, maybe the factor that helps us. Maybe, yeah. Okay. Uh, the factor that helps us to differentiate between instrumental voicings is the presence of frequencies called partials, right? Yep. Uh, that exist in addition to the fundamental pitch phasing plate. Partials that are higher than the fundamental frequency are called upper partials or overtones. Great. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, have y'all heard that term before? Um, dealing with overtones. I know. I know a lot of musicians kind of throw that word around, but um, do we have an understanding of um, what that means? No. Okay. Let's figure no. it out. Let's figure it out together. Okay. So here's what overtones mean. Hold on. I think Garami is messaging me. That his computer's messing up. Arami, we cannot hear you. Can you hear me? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Yes? Okay, awesome. Um, I'll keep the chat open in case you want to type your answer in. Um, uh, I'm not sure why it's not working. I'm not sure. Okay, let's keep going. Just uh, stop me if, if your mic winds up working again. Okay. Um, what was I saying before? I got, I, I messed up. Harmonic content. Okay, what, what are harmonics? Okay, um, here is the easiest way I can explain harmonics, okay? Um, when we play any note, any singular note, whether that's on a piano or sing it or it's on a tuba, those, those notes, um, a lot of it has to do with the science of sound. Okay, basically in a nutshell, harmonics are additional frequencies that you may or may not naturally hear. Um, have you all ever seen that, like, when people try to train dogs, they use these special whistles that when they blow it, like, only dogs can hear it? Yeah. Yes. Okay, that is an example of that, where um, that note that the whistle blows is in harmonics that are, are, are not, are not um, audible to the human ear. You know what I mean? It's like 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 when a mosquito breathes or something, or whatever. It's like that. That's like a sound that's so. It's not within our human frequency range, um, and so harmonics are basically sounds that exist within notes that um, are either really really high or really really low, and are able to be perceived by humans and also not. So again, it's boiling down to the science of sound. Um, does that sort of Describe it a little bit better. I'm sorry, I'm not in a, I'm not a professional audiologist and did a dissertation on, on this. But again, it's it's just interesting to see too what some of these terms mean. So check it out. Because musical instruments produce sound waves that contain harmonics with various amplitude and phase relationships, the resulting waveforms bear little resemblance to the shape of a single frequency. Yada yada yada. So basically, you can boil it down to when I when I play an A note. Some of the additional frequencies include the fifth, also the octave, and then going on and on and on. Th this is how uh, professional pianos are tuned as well. Okay, this is where I'll leave us off for right here. But um, basically, I wanted today to be a little bit of an introduction to using the book a little bit more as a reference. See, so check this out. Like, if I were to look at these three audio waves, it helps, it helps me to know a little bit about harmonics, a little bit about waveform, about amplitude, so I know which one is best. You know what I mean? And again, if you have audio that looks like one of these three, you can read back over here to see which one um, is correct or just to learn a little bit more about you know, what's happening with, with the audio that you're recording. 
Does anyone have any questions about using this book as a reference? No, I don't have any questions. Okay, I know today was a little bit boring, but let's dive into something a little bit more fun before we go. That way, um, that'll help us with this next project. Okay, we're talking about the next project now. Um, actually, real quick, I wanted to show you all this because uh, we had talked about this a little bit uh, last time, and I wanted to kind of wrap up. All right, so about the, about the sound wave and stuff, the big takeaway from this portion of the book is to have a better understanding of the science of recorded music. Obviously, I am no expert with like, you know, audiology or whatever and being able to tell you like, oh, that note that you're singing has this many frequencies and this many partials. You know, that's more of like the sciencey brainy part, but it's interesting to learn about. You would you would use that material if you were maybe writing like an academic paper of some kind. That would be a great that would be great material to reference. Okay, to sum up this material in a nutshell, the musician or instrument you record must be captured at an appropriate volume and appropriate distance away from the mic. We will go into more detail in the coming chapters, but the, again, this is more about the science of music. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about the project. So for this next project, students will need to use the Zoom device to record one to five minutes of audio that features sounds within nature or not. For example, the sound of traffic, which is not in nature, right? Or I guess technically it is, the, the natures of humanity. Um, or the sounds of the waterfall around campus. There's a couple of cool spots where you can see little water, like that waterfall area, or the, the fountain area would be cool, or somewhere by the, I don't know, you can capture some sounds of some ducks or something, or whatever, be creative. Um, also, I wanted to show y'all my studio, just so that way y'all can see a little, a little, another example of like how basic things you need to get a like a professional studio going. So this is what like what I'm looking at right now. This is what you're looking at right now. So I've got my computer monitor, got my camera up here. So I've got my audio interface, got some monitors, some acoustic treatment. I'm actually gonna build some stands for this. That way these panels go a little bit higher. So it's maybe covers the whole uh, speaker. And that's pretty much it, you know? Um, I've got a microphone too that you can see. There's a little speaker monitor. There's a microphone, not too crazy. An audio interface, mic cable, nah, not a lot. Okay, um, does anyone have any questions? about that of like I don't know you can if you can always email me or text me or whatever email is probably best um, asking like what you maybe want for your studio or like I said just a set of headphones goes a long way I'm using headphones right now um, yep great all right cool so let's talk about this project Um, I, Arami is asking a question in the chat. He's asking if we can use our phones for the project. Yes. I was going to wait. I was going to wait to, to have that option available until like, because I want it, I want it, I want it to be kind of flexible. Like, to be honest, the, the recording I'm about to show you, the one that I made is, is with my phone. So, okay. So watch this. This will be quick. I promise. All right, so you can go to course materials. You can go to field recording project and see the instructions below. So check it out. This is basically what you're doing, folks. Um, if you wanna use the Zoom device, you're more than welcome to. Um, here, here's a video that explains the instructions, even though it's a different Zoom device. Um, you basically need a cable that goes from the Zoom into a USB, and then you can download the files that way. You can watch that video here. But okay, here's the deal. Can y'all uh, listen to this? I recorded this on my phone and I want you to tell me what you hear, okay? Nod your head, yes? <laughs> okay. Okay, yes. <laughs> I feel like I'm talking to a blank screen. 
All right, listen to this. What did you hear? Water. The rain. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Like rain, and I also hear like little chimes. Yeah. So, nice. Yeah. What else? Did you hear the rooster? Oh, that's what it was? Yeah. He was very faint. <laughs> he was like, cock a doodle doo. -doo. Oh, I didn't know that was a rooster. I thought it was like a dog or something in the background. Listen one more time. See if you can hear the rooster. Did you hear it? It was right there at the end. Yeah, I, I heard that. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, this is this is the stuff we're gonna we're gonna apply this to because that rooster crowing might be at a certain frequency, and I might want to bring that frequency out so that way you hear more of the rooster crowing. You know what I'm saying? All right, so check this out. This is what that rec this recording that you just heard. This is what it looks like in the computer. Okay, I'm actually gonna show you this in Audacity too. Okay, um, for this part of the assignment, I need to send y'all an audio link. That way you can listen to the audio that it's coming from my computer. Can y'all, I'm gonna email it to you. Can you open the link and just click start streaming? That way you can hear the audio that's coming from my, uh, like it's weird because I have to do that when it comes to a DAW, but if I do it on like YouTube, it works. It's kind of weird, but okay. This link that I'm going to send you is so that way you can listen to um, this. Because I'm going to edit it, and you're going to watch me do it. Um, start transmission, copy link. Lulu email. I'll do this real quick, I promise. Uh, I'll do it in this class one. Apply all. Great. Give me a thumbs up if... Um, you guys have that open. I got it. Got it? Yes. All right, cool. I also got it. Let me know if you can hear this. This will be coming through that streaming and not through WebEx. Can y'all hear that? Yeah, I can hear it. Yes. Okay, here's yes. why Here's why this is important. Because you guys are going to watch me mess with the audio, okay? So I'm going to see if I can explain this real quick. So um, this is, this is I'm not going to do anything crazy, but I'm just going to show you what we're going to be doing. You can, I'm going to show you this in Audacity in a second too, but it's, you can hear it, you can hear it here better than through Audacity. So that's why I'm doing it here. 
Okay, so what this is, is this is basically a program that is just exactly like Audacity. They both pretty much do a lot of the same things, except this is a different program that's a little bit more advanced that hopefully y'all are going to get a copy of pretty soon that if I can get with Dr. Hage, I can figure out whatever one she's purchasing. But like Gabriel mentioned last time, there's other programs like Fruity Loops and um, Ableton and Pro Tools. Like They're all programs that basically pretty much do the same thing. They all record audio. They all allow you to edit. They all allow you to make professional recordings, basically. This is just one that um, basically me and a lot of the people that I work with use, so that's why I wound up using this one. But okay, I digress. So listen and check out this bump right here, okay? Okay, what happens in the beginning? It sounds like you're moving it to the position. Like you like you're moving the, the zoom or whatever you're using. Yeah, there's all these kind of extra sounds, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Thanks guys for giving me a heads up. Okay, so here's here's the whole gist of what we're trying to do. Basically you're gonna go out in nature, you're gonna make that recording, you're gonna uh I guess airdrop it or email it to yourself, whatever you gotta do. And that recording is going to have some probably some bumps along the way, some some stuff that's like unnatural, if you will. So we're going to edit that out. So what we're going to do is basically cut um, some of the audio that we don't want. And obviously, I don't want that bump. So what I can do is pick a spot. Um, and you, you can do this with with Audacity as well. And then you can you can you can cut it and I'll show you both ways on um on audacity so if i want to cut out that bump i'm going to do that and then the end sounds fine no other crazy sounds so as you can see this audio right here looks it looks kind of consistent right there's no other crazy bumps yeah <laughs> okay great so what I'm also going to do is I'm also going to apply a fade. So that way it sounds more natural when it comes in and comes out. See if you notice the difference. Maybe I might cut that out too. Did y'all hear how it faded in and faded out? Yeah. yeah. Excellent. So that's basically all we're going to do for this project, okay? Write this down. I basically want you to step one, record the audio. Step two, get that audio off of your phone or the Zoom device and onto your computer, okay? Step three, put that audio into the DAW. And in this case, it's probably going to be Audacity again, which I'm going to show you those instructions right now. But when I do this, you're not going to be able to hear it because as if for some reason it doesn't work with Audacity. But the audio is going to look the exact same. So here's how we do it in Audacity, okay? Watch. I'm going to open up Audacity. I'm actually going to start a new one. Okay. Open up Audacity. You're going to click um, Tracks, Add New. I tried it this way last time and it worked, but for some reason it didn't work this time, but I'll try it again. Because last time I did file, import, audio. Because that's what we're trying to do, but it like didn't work for some reason, so I don't know what's going on. But the other way is um, tracks, add new, mono track, And then maybe let's try it, import, audio. Not sure. The other way I did it was I, I the audio that I got from my phone I just dragged it into um, Audacity. Okay, so I guess dragging it in is the best way. So when we listen to this, there's that bump again. Okay, that bump is right there. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. We're pick a spot, play it. You're gonna. Ugh. 
Sorry, I'm having to switch my audio devices a lot. Give me one second. Don't know why. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to pick that spot. And then I'm going to click um, edit. Cut. Okay. Now, on your computer, it might give you a different shortcut. This is for Mac. So I want you to kind of look at where that shortcut is. So I'm going to highlight all the stuff I want to cut. So from the beginning to maybe there or there. I'll let you use your best judgment on your end. Highlight it. Cut it. See that? So then it kind of scooches over. And then... Looks pretty good. It's the same audio we looked at before. Okay. And then we didn't have to edit the end, but you might have to. So if you have to edit the end, you're going to highlight the part that you want to cut, edit, and cut it. See how it goes away? Now, here, here's the thing about audio editing. Okay. You're going to have to like listen to this a bunch of times. Maybe listen to the end in the beginning. So I can click maybe here and then press space bar and it'll play from there instead of having to start all the way from the beginning. But I want you to basically come up with like a professional version um, or a professional edit of, of, some, of some nature sound that you professionally recorded with either your phone or with the Zoom. And so here's the last step. After I've edited it and it uh, looks pretty consistent, looks pretty good, and it sounds pretty good, I'm going to go to the beginning. Oops. Click over. And I'm going to go to Effect. Fade in. So you might have to highlight whatever part you want to fade in. So I'll highlight maybe a little bit. Effect. Fade in. Did y'all see how the audio kind of changed right there? It changed from being normal to like having the fade in applied. And then you can do the same thing with the end. So take a look at the audio. And if I go to effect, fade out, it kind of decrescendos. You see that? And then you're going to listen to it a bunch of times, make sure it sounds good. And then when you're done, you're going to go to, we're going to do something different this time. We're going to go to file, export, and you're going to export it as an MP3 to me. Does anyone have any questions about this assignment? Um, how long do you want the recording? Let's look at Blackboard real quick. I tried to have all the instructions on there. So, course materials, uh, field recording project. Can you read the first paragraph right here so everybody can know and maybe we can look at this together? Students need to rent out the handheld Zoom recording device to capture the field recording around campus approximately one to five minutes in length. Excellent. Get creative. Oh, okay. <laughs> yep. so, so check it out. So because we're going to have to edit this a little bit, I would recommend you you maybe have a lot more material to choose from versus, versus the one that I did. I think I did it exactly one minute, but then I had to edit it, so it was only like 45 seconds or something. So just be aware of that, okay? Okay. Great. All right, everybody. Um, that concludes, I guess, what I had to talk about today in class. I'm going to post this lecture video on Blackboard as well. It'll be under this folder, Professor Gutierrez Lecture Videos. You can always watch or fast forward if you just want to look at a specific part that you want me to go over again. You can watch that in the lecture video, okay? Does anyone have any Thank questions you. for me before we go? No, I don't have any questions. But thank you. Okay, y'all. I'll post this video some some point today. Uh, that way you can watch it again. And, and remember, uh, we're going to be having projects due every couple weeks in this class. Just because they're all small projects, but um, hopefully this will help you build your portfolio uh, to learn a little bit more about recording. You know, is this going to be your absolute best work of all time you know maybe not but it's just for you to learn you know what i mean so if y'all can get that stuff submitted it's going to help you out a lot 
and I'll see you next week. Okay, thank you. Okay. Bye, thank Bye. you. Have a good day, Professor. You too.